In this video, we're looking at the last short section at the end of Acts 20. And in this short series of Gospel Essentials, uh, so far we've looked at uh, the call to testify to the truth. We've heard Paul urging the Ephesian elders to protect the truth. In the previous video, we saw Paul calling them to rely on God's grace. If you've missed any of these details in the previous videos, then I encourage you to go and watch those. And in this final section, at the end of Acts 20, it's much more than just Luke wrapping up the story for us. Um, we see Paul living out what he said he wanted to do in verse 24, where he said, My only aim is to complete the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. So in this section, that's what we see we see that he wants to complete the task. Now, I encourage you to go back and read the whole section. So from Acts 20, verse 17, all the way to verse 38, just to familiarize yourself with what we've heard Paul saying in his speech so far. And then these details, we'll see Paul actually living out uh, what he has been telling them in his address to these Ephesian elders. These gospel essentials that he wanted them to know were essentials that he himself lived by. If you haven't done so yet, I encourage you to take some time just to pray, ask God to help you to understand his word. And then as always, I'm just gonna highlight a few of the things that I've noticed in, in this piece of text, and I'll be showing how they link back with the things that Paul has said in his address so far. First, and in many ways, uh, most importantly, just keeping this verse 24 at the center where uh, Paul has said he's going to Jerusalem. He knows that it's going to be um, hard. Prison and hardships are facing him. He's already faced severe testing. That's been uh, Paul's lot in life. But he says here, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. It was a task that the Lord Jesus himself had given to Paul. You can go and read about that in Acts chapter 9. And here in these final verses, after everything that Paul has said to them, we see that Paul is driven to complete that task. And we see him living out the gospel truths that he's spoken of. Um, I divided this passage into verse 36. Then verse 37 to 38a, and then just the end of verse 38. And what we see here in the prayer is Paul relying on God's grace. Just as he had told them to do, um, he is doing himself. So in the section we looked at in the previous video, he said, Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. And Paul was calling them to be uh, men who relied on God's grace to them. And here, where we see Paul finish speaking, and we're told that he knelt down and prayed. Now, this uh, kneeling down is a, a picture of submission, uh, worshipping the Lord. Uh, we've seen in Luke's writing so far, as Simon Peter kneeling before Jesus in Luke 5, we've seen Jesus kneeling in prayer in the garden in Luke 22. Uh, we've seen Stephen kneeling and praying as he was being stoned in Acts 7. And this is really a picture of submission in worship. Um, it's similar if you go and uh, look at Daniel for some uh, an Old Testament model of this. In Daniel 6 verse 10, we see Daniel uh, kneeling and got him into trouble in that uh, occasion. He gets thrown into the lion's den. But here, Paul models his reliance on God to them. He said everything that he wants to say. So again, in the previous, uh, in the earlier section, he says, I have declared to you, I'm innocent of your blood, for I haven't hesitated to tell you the whole will of God. So Paul is saying, I've told you everything that I, you need to know. So he's finished speaking and now he kneels down with all of them and they prayed. And you can imagine that prayer being fueled by the things he said, his testifying to the truth and 
praying that they will keep protecting the truth and keep relying on God's grace as they follow his example and testify to the good news of God's grace. So Paul models to them this dependence on God. Um, you can see Paul is uh, the key character um, in this section. And the other character is a group of them, the Ephesian elders, all of them. And they all... So, in that first verse, uh, following on from this reliance that we've seen Paul has had on God throughout this section, um, he models that reliance by praying. He's prayerfully dependent on God before he leaves. Um, he's said things like, I serve the Lord, showing that he is somebody who, who relies on the Lord. Uh, he is doing the, the task that the Lord Jesus has given him. Um, so he's wanting to uh, be faithful to God. He committed uh, them into God's hands, the word of God's grace. Um, and so he's modeling this uh, reliance on God's word um, and on God's grace as he kneels and prays, uh, praying for them, praying for the task that lies ahead of him. And the next thing that we see um, is this deep love that they have for one another. It says they all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. They grieved. Um, it's a picture of real love that they have for one another. And again, this is something we've seen through the whole section where right at the beginning, he says, you know how I lived. Uh, he had modeled them. Um, he modeled to them what it looks like to live a God-glorifying life. Um, he's been in their houses and he's spent time with them by both his, his life and his lips. He has testified to the truth. And um, he's also, he says, I haven't, I've told you everything you need to know. He loved them enough to tell them the whole counsel of God. And just interesting here, he says, they all wept. We've actually seen Paul mentioning his tears or in tears a couple of times. He says, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears. And then in verse 31, again, he said, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Uh, so Paul's love for them is on display and that he cares really deeply for them, wanting them to continue with this task that God um, had given him and that he had passed on to them. And so now all of them in tears together is just showing how deep this love uh, for each other was. Uh, they are embracing and kissing. And these are words that uh, were used in Luke 15, um, both the, the embracing and the kissing are words that are used um, in Luke 15 in the story of the, the prodigal son as he returns. Um, the love that the father shows him is, is shown in this embrace and kissing him. Um, it's a picture of really deep love. And this is what we see here. So in this desire to complete the task, Paul models his reliance on God. But he also, he's come back to them because he loves them deeply. He wants them also to complete the task that God has set for them. Um, it does grieve him, it grieves them uh, that he will never see, that they will never see his face again. Now he told them that back in verse 25. So it says, now I know that none of you will ever see me again. Um, and that really grieves them, that they, they aren't going to see him again in this life. So you really do get this uh, picture of a deep, deep love that they have for one another. But... The section ends with Paul leaving them. And what this is showing us is that he is willing to complete the task. And he's willing to do that no matter the cost. Because if you remember what we saw a moment ago, he's going to Jerusalem, that's where he's headed, but he knows that prison and hardship await him. And everyone's been warning him, the Holy Spirit has been warning him, through many different people, we see that continuing in chapter 21 again. So he knows that it's not a comfortable journey that he's about to head to do. 
but he also knows that he has a great task, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. So that uh, verse 24 really is uh, a very important verse in this whole section, and he wants to complete that task. So although he loves them deeply, they love him deeply, they don't hold on to him. They accompany him to the ship and they leave. Now we do see at the beginning of chapter 21, it says um, that they had torn them, once we had torn ourselves away from them. Um, so it really is not an easy departure that we see here. But Paul is absolutely committed to complete the task that had been given to him. And him leaving is modeling to them that they also need to have a commitment to complete the task that God has given them. That they need to keep relying on God's grace and that God's amazing grace, what God has done for them, what he's done for us in Christ, that should compel us to complete the task that God has given us. The absolute tragedy that we see 30 years later uh, when John wrote the book of Revelation, in Revelation 2, a letter is written to the church in Ephesus, so that's these Ephesian elders, and in verses 4 and 5, uh, we are told that Jesus says, I hold this against you, Ephesus. You have forsaken your first love. Now those words should grieve us, and they should challenge us. We don't want to be a people who forsake the love that we had at first, the, the amazing love that we've been shown in Christ should compel us to love God, to love each other, to love the lost. And so as we rely on God's grace, um, as we go together in this great task that God has given us, we should want to complete this task. Um, we don't want to be counted among those who have forsaken the love that we had at first. Uh, we want to keep going with this task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. We want to see disciples made. We want to see disciples matured. And if we want that to happen, then we need to keep uh, proclaiming this truth, testifying to this truth, protecting this truth. As we rely on God's grace, we want to complete the task. So as you dig into this uh, further, um, I pray that as you go through this whole section, don't just focus on uh, these three verses. Go and look how Paul has spoken about these things now, how he's modeling them, and pray that God would increasingly make you and those who you teach a people who do rely on God's grace. And that as you rest in that grace, that you will be compelled to complete the task that God has given us, this glorious task of testifying to the good news of God's grace.